for any entrepreneur who is reaching out to a venture capital firm if you want to build a deep bond you need to first build an understanding of what is bothering the venture capital firm typically what is bothering the venture capital firm is the risk return ratio the evolution of b2b or b2b2c technology companies or startups in comparison with a d2c or a b2c uh, volume is lower at the same time inherently because they are so used to that um, b2c taking up the the indian founders despite them solving global problems they are in a way handicapped in their mindset to think global the startups needs to have a very clear uh, point of view the story has to be convincing enough to us to realize that oh we need to think about a broader spectrum than what we have been looking at and not necessarily the other way around the uk founder will say oh india is huge how will how will i do business there in india i don't know what is it is too too hot too vast on the other side if i have to talk about uh, the indian founders oh uk oh great uh, but yeah it's going to be too costly than india you know how will i leave the family and go so these are the kind of cultural differences and mindset changes that one need to kind of navigate welcome to the first investor session of startup tamil podcast and uh, i am delighted to have a few representative investors who are going to be on the show i will start by asking them to introduce themselves and what they look for typically from an investor that they fund we'll start with you prem um thanks arun uh, uh, good to be here and good to be with uh, these knowledgeable people i am prem bartasardi uh, founder and managing partner of pontac uh, we are a uk headquartered fund operating in the uk india corridor since 2015 um we invest on either sides of uh, the corridor in technology companies uh in sectors which are advancing mankind at this point in time we are investing in four sectors uh namely agri tech fintech health tech and climate and clean tech um primary focus is on b2b and b2c businesses uh which have the opportunity to scale domestically as well as internationally to drive value for market thank you chiran uh hi everyone uh, glad to be part of this conversation um i am part of atex ventures uh, we are a deep tech focused venture capital firm uh, as part of our investment thesis the the focus is to invest in companies that we believe are going to have advanced technology and vast technological innovation that can make a massive impact to the growth of the sector or a massive disruption to the sector by itself uh we typically start investing from anything from 2 to 5 crore as a first check and we can go up to all the way up to 20 crores uh, as a as a total size of investment in any particular startup um so uh, we have been operating in india for a while we have been very excited about tamil nadu excited about this conversation so nice thank you so much rohit Thanks Arun for the invitation happy to be here uh, I am Rohit I am one of the partners at in 44 Capital we are an angel syndicate uh, investing in early stage tech b2b companies uh, primarily india focused our ticket sizes range from 50 lakhs to 2 cr and we are looking for companies uh, planning to scale their 0 to 1 journey as well as from 1 to 10 uh we bring in a lot of mentorship and other capabilities to support our startups from the early stage onwards thank you so much ryan yes great thank you for having me my name is ryan shingati i am the managing partner at transition vc transition vc is a climate tech focused fund uh we write early seed checks um the whole idea of transition vc is that we are on a mission to accelerate india's net zero journey so one of the target that we've kept for ourselves is we want to offset 40 million tons of carbon footprint in india roughly that's about 1% of uh, total india's carbon uh, footprint and uh, as you know fun fact uh, not so much fun is india is the is one of the top 3 countries that are polluting or rather having the maximum carbon footprint so india is on third so we're trying to probably not win this race and contribute to this bit by uh, investing in technology wow so exciting that you know all four of you 
you know, have a very early stage lens and that is going to be a recurring theme in the startups that we meet, you know, in Startup Tamara as well. Uh, so we'll probably go in the reverse order, starting with you, you know, you talked about climate and we are seeing, you know, the risks of climate going wrong uh, already uh, and uh, climate is going to be clearly uh, a flavor of the startups that we are going to see in this show as well. Uh, having said that, you know, we are going to see entrepreneurs come on to the show with expectations. But I would like to see them, you know, we don't actually present so much about how you guys are founders as well sure. and how you guys are entrepreneurs as well, right? So, uh, so please talk to us about, you know, this is the riskiest form of capital mm. that, you know, somebody could invest in, right? So, uh, please talk to us about why risk capital for you and why early stage risk capital and that too you've chosen particularly Ryan to be in one particular sector right so that makes my view at least that much more riskier right yeah. so why have you chosen to be a in this space and within that one sector uh, please great thanks for that um, I see climate change uh, honestly as a massive business opportunity because especially energy transition, right? It's going to change. Uh, I think the next decade is just going to change how we individually, as well as on an industry level, consume energy. And uh, even if you look at uh, the stats that Indian government is preparing, right? So we, when you look at the energy per capita uh, in India, which is which has a one, over 1.3 billion people, uh, it's going to go 2.5x in the next decade. And uh, because Indians have aspirations and that's one of our biggest strength. Our market is one of our biggest strength and uh, we're going to consume more energy. If we continue importing fossil fuel uh, and pay foreign reserves for it, uh, I think we'll be in deep trouble. So we actually have no choice but to find alternatives. And that's where EV, hydrogen is coming in. So we believe we are a little late to the party. The whole world is from the climate change point of view. And uh, that does not mean we just do nothing. I think uh, perhaps the only solution to the climate crisis uh, is innovation and technology innovation. So we want to support that. Uh, and the, if you look at, say, the value of death of startup entrepreneurs, especially in solving climate problems, because these requires hard tech solutions. Uh, it's there is a significant role of software, but it also requires a lot of hardware. Um, so this also requires capital at an early stage. So if someone is building and solving for a big problem or a real problem, which has a massive business opportunity, and if they are thinking in the right direction, aiding them not just with capital, but also mentorship of people or, or experts who have built companies in this space in their era. So this is say energy transition 3.0 era, right? So in this era, using the domain expertise of people of the previous era and providing them with capital and even more, which is say customer validation, uh, go to market access and bringing them POs and sales. Uh, I think it is a very catalytic form of capital at early stage and which is needed. So there are a lot of investors who are at a late stage who want to write much larger checks once the product market fit is established. Uh, so we want to play in a space which also is a white space from an investment point of view, investment financial returns point of view, uh, because a lot of people want to come in once the product risk is eliminated or the market risk is eliminated, or product market fit is done. So you want to come in a little earlier, identify that, use our expert domain expertise or people who are in the team, their expertise, and help them get to that level so they are able to actually achieve uh, the product market fit and contribute towards India's net zero journey. Very nice, very nice. So, now, so Rohit, uh, you know, you've been a part of the ecosystem here in Chennai, in IIT as well. So again, Back to the same question, why early stage and what are the risks that you see and like he said, what are the de-risking factors as well, you know, to somebody like you? Um, right. So see, we, we focus on early stage B2B precise, predominantly because that's where our expertise lies, right? We are playing to our strengths in terms of where can we de-risk in terms of analysis, evaluation, reaching out to our investor base, reaching out to our 
uh, well wishers or advisors and uh, any investment is risky right so highly risky highly illiquid investments definitely are there but uh, that's where the opportunity to make a lot of returns is also so from a risk return perspective we always play how can we minimize or manage the risk for a sort of an abnormal returns or high returns right so it's always a management on both sides and we believe that we add a lot of value on that evaluation process at an early stage when let's say you know uh, at a later stage as he said if the product market fit is there the revenues are there you are growing you have numbers to back up your data uh, a lot of people are willing to put in the capital but the evaluation that is required at an early stage is something of a uh, expertise that you develop over a period of time. So with my experience in multiple different networks, as well as our contacts, along with my partner's contacts, we believe we have that expertise to help B2B companies scale up, uh, provide them the market access, the first pilots that they want, get the customer's feedback. Um, and that is where we uh, leverage our network and try to make a better investment. Very nice, very nice. Chirag, you know, we can double click on, you know, the life of a fund manager or an investor who has external capital, right? So, uh, please talk to some of our entrepreneurs from the perspective of where do you yourself get capital to onward invest in them? And what are some of the dynamics of that external capital that you manage and responsible for from an entrepreneur's perspective? This is a very interesting topic, by the way. Uh, a lot of time entrepreneurs fail to uh, appreciate or understand uh, that most of the venture capital firms are custodians of someone else's money. And because you are a custodian of someone else's money, you are also running a company or a startup. And unlike a startup which has a very specific product, uh, for us, the product is the startup. So now, uh, for, for any entrepreneur who is reaching out to a venture capital firm, if you want to build a deep bond, you need to first build an understanding of what is bothering the venture capital firm. Uh, and typically what is bothering the venture capital firm is the risk return ratio. Now, risk there are two types of risks that uh, the venture capital firms are typically bothered about. And these are the typical risks that they have to justify to their investors and that's why they are trying to figure out those questions like when Rohit was talking about evaluation matrix uh, there are two types of risks that uh, the LPs are very concerned or the our investors are very concerned about one is a technological risk in India there are 200,000 PhD thesis coming out every year there is a massive amount of technological innovation that is happening right now. Not everything is exponential innovation. There is some operational innovation. They are all types of uh, research and innovation. If we believe PhD is a standard for innovation. Having said that, less than 1000 innovation are right now being commercialized. And the reason is on a scale of 1 to 9, the technological readiness level, when you finish a PhD, you are typically on a TRL 4. However, for a, for a technology to be commercialized, you have to be at a TRL number 7. Now, while Ryan was talking about the value of death, the value of death actually exists between 4 to 7. And when an when a entrepreneur reaches out and is talking about, oh, the technology is developed and my thesis has been accepted, let's say even uh, at some of the best universities, let's say IIT Chennai uh, over here, uh, he is probably at uh, TRL level 4 or at best a TRL level 5. What he fails to understand a venture capital point of view when uh, I'm looking at evaluation because I have to justify to my investors uh, for me uh, an, uh, uh, a PhD thesis is not a proof of technology. You are two steps or three steps away from actually technology being ready and uh, typically the difference is taking that piece of paper and taking that uh, product that you might have built in the lab and taking it in an unknown envi environment or an environment which is owned by the target customer and testing if is it working or not. Of course, a typical, I'm simplifying it right now, our uh, technological readiness level 7 will have bugs, but at least it's functioning in a, in a customer environment with potential bugs. 
and that's where the value of death really comes in. When uh, when an entrepreneur is talking to me that oh actually it's proven it's not proven because you are two three steps away you have not taken it to a target customer and you have not tested it out. When I go to my investor I can't say the on paper on a 200 page or a 300 page thesis that you presented to a bunch of professors it was working. Uh, I should be able to say that you took to some of the marquee customers maybe free uh, maybe let's say uh, Tata Refractory Tata Automotive or some of the large auto component players that exist uh, in in this in, in Tamil Nadu, uh, we went to they went there. We tested out the product. This worked and this did not work. That's where the uh, first differentiation on the uh, the misunderstanding comes in, uh, and that's where I say that we are also custodian on of someone else's money, and I know that's going to bother them. So that's the technology aspect of it. Then there's a second aspect, which is a commercial aspect of it. Now, a lot of times founders get excited that uh, I went to one of the marquee customer, let's say TVS in this region, and uh, I managed to get a revenue of 10 lakh rupees. Now, this is where the difference comes in. For an entrepreneur, a 10 lakhs might be a massive achievement, which it is. But we are also an entrepreneur. We are looking at a benchmark where people are generating with similar set of customers probably 5 crore revenue. Now, the question comes, which I have to justify to my investors, why we are investing in a company which is generating, taking a smaller pie of the cake was and leaving a, a company which is taking a bigger pie uh, of the cake. So, understanding that the of the cake itself, the size of the pie is very important, which uh, sometimes I feel that that's where the, the commercial conversation gaps comes in. So, as long as the entrepreneur understand those two dimensions and where we as entrepreneurs are looking at them and being a custodian of someone else's money and how they are looking at that, the moment that gap is minimized, most of the time, if not all, the investments actually happen. And that's where I think is the magic uh, scenario that happens. Very nice, very nice. So you put that whole de-risking proposition, you know, into perspective. So, Prem, uh, you know, uh, Pontac is very unique in the sense, even in the past, uh, you know, a lot of people have heard about the Indo-US corridor. A lot of the model entrepreneurs we all look up to, Apple, Tesla, whatnot, right, are all in the US. The Indo-UK corridor is, you know, I don't know, you probably only fund which plays in that. So, you know, again, from an entrepreneurial lens, when you started Pontac as a co-founder of that fund, uh, what did you see as some of the benefits that you get from this connection with the UK? So, uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, we coincidentally became the first ever UK India fund in history. Um, and uh, we continue to play a part. Uh, so nine years in almost 10 years next month. Um, it has been an interesting journey. So the why we started this was UK and India um, continue to share the the third and the fourth rankings in terms of unicorn indexes. Obviously, they have flipped their places and India has come ahead uh, in the last few years ahead of UK. But when I started this, what we figured was as much as UK was a very small in terms of population, the IP coming out of UK, they were punching way above their weight. But at the same time, that IP was only moving towards the West from a consumption standpoint. India was only being looked at as a pure play cost arbitrage. And we wanted to change that. At the same time, from a Indian context perspective, and even I, uh, then in 2015 and when we started and even now, the evolution of B2B or B2B2C technology companies or startups in comparison with a D2C or a B2C uh, volume is lower, far lower. At the same time, Inherently, because they are so used to that um, B2C taking up the, the Indian founders, despite them solving global problems, they are in a way handicapped in their mindset to think global. Now, at the same time, if I have to have a pure play, wear a pure play financial hat to add value to our investor base, the assets or the underlying companies that we're investing in, in India, they are at least one third of the price of the UK 
or one fifth of the price of the US. So that made absolute financial sense. The other part of the financial sense was the ongoing cost to deliver as well. Because what happens traditionally in UK and US is they build a product for scaling, they come to India for, for operational efficiencies and so on and so forth. But here you've actually kind of created a product which actually works. And then subsequently, it is able to scale internationally because the only way is up. Because all you really need is local sales and marketing functions there and probably some design and engineering functions and local regulatory compliance functions. Whereas your major part of your uh, your, your developmental or design engineering talent resides within India, which means your cost is already covered. So that really has as, as fueled the growth. And that is where, you know, at a, at a portfolio of about 120 companies um, right now, I'm pleased to say that at least 14 of our portfolio companies operate more than one country. You know, the highest being 10 countries in operation. And and what we have witnessed is, is the size and way in which these companies are able to scale drastically into the global markets is also huge. And also at the same time, beat Western market is also huge. We have had, uh, to give a couple of examples, we've had one company in um, railway track geometry monitoring or precision monitoring, which um, has actually beat seven players, competitors from the Western world, and they backed the project from uh, railways. So that's number one. That is in terms of beating Western competition in the domestic uh, for, uh, domestic uh, market. At the same time, we have another company in artificial intelligence in health, which caters to identification, diagnosis, and screening and prediction of 160 diseases with just one image, be it an X-ray or be it a mammogram or whatever, at just 485 rupees for and less than 53 seconds with a 99.3% accuracy. That company has scaled in two years from one country to 10 countries. So that is the scale we are talking about. Okay, and there are, these are the, 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 the what I've given you is an example is just on hardware and software, but then you also have a hardware plus software companies as well, which are also doing significant. So um, that is what we were, we aspired to change. And I think the change is happening. And what you, what you will also find is that what we wanted to create and which we are creating now is that because India and UK share the, 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 the volume of IPs together and the kind of uh, value positions, especially when the world has completely changed to where the world is becoming flat as a map, consumerization has become flat. People are willing to pay premium for the right product. And, and actually there is no premium X-ray because the product is actually a Starbucks coffee in, in, in UK versus Starbucks coffee in China is exactly the same thing. In fact, Chinese is even more pricier, right? So, <laughs> right? Yeah, it is actually, <laughs> right? So when, when people are willing to pay the premium, then the collective technology transfer between the two countries is to be considered as a platform for intra-technology transfer to develop within the two countries and then serve as the platform to create a ripple effect in the rest of the world. And that is what we started witnessing in our own portfolio firms. So uh, that is what we set out to do. And yes, so basically, if I have to put things in context, out of 11 regions of the UK, we've invested in two. And out of 28 states of India, we have invested in 23 states of India. Wow. So it's going well. Wonderful, wonderful. 23 out of 28. Yeah. Which okay. is uh, oh, First of all, India does not have 28 states. <laughs> Let's get the geography right here. <laughs> <laughs> 23 is a big number though. Yeah, 23 is a big yeah, number. 23, wow. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I think uh, this is a great framework you know, to get these entrepreneurs familiar with what are the lenses you guys are using you know, to, and where you come from. Right? So it's very important for you are not seen as just a money bag. Right? That I will pitch to Prem the same way I will pitch to Ryan. You know, that should not be the case. And that's something that, you know, over a period of time, we will, as more investors or more types of investors or entrepreneurs get familiar with, you know, could be different setting. Please. I'm going to make a comment on what you said. Sure. Uh, like you said, how you pitch to Prem or versus Ryan or me and Rohit uh, will be different. But that's a very sensitive topic as well because I have seen uh, startups also tweaking the business model to align with what is the investment thesis of the investor. Uh, which is, I feel, is a very dangerous conversation. Dangerous yeah. conversation. Uh, the the, uh, yeah. the the startups needs to have a very clear uh, point of view. Uh, this is this is what I what we stand for. But their point of view has to be backed by sufficient data. 
to convince let's say ryan to probably re realize that oh actually i was not thinking in this direction and uh, maybe i should think in this direction the the story has to be convincing enough to us to realize that oh we need to think about a broader spectrum than what we have been looking at and not necessarily the other way around and most of the startups where i have invested are the ones where i realize that oh actually i did not even look at the business like this one of the investment we are doing right now in a steel industry is fabulous i i always thought steel is a very standard operating business and it's a very standardized business with no innovation but someone came who made me realize that actually you can do deep tech innovation in steel manufacturing as well and this is the impact of that that made me change my conviction my beliefs and my thesis and not their business model so that's a very important aspect that i want to start up no no thanks for bringing that out uh, to look at you know like you said you know the entrepreneur has to present his case yes. and he has to find the uk angle to that yeah. be executed yeah. enough to build yeah. and he has to bring a climate yeah. case yeah. to yeah. that you know? so just yeah. just on that note i mean how yeah. we specific beat in beat are uh, our um, uh, entrepreneurs or investi companies in the uk or beat companies in in india it is very natural that our point at our point of entry both the uh, founders on both the sides of the uh, um, uh, of the world have not thought about the other country at all because they don't know so we come with the knowledge of what can be translated as is or what can be translated with some tweaks to be able to do that so that is the value we bring to the table and more often than not what we find is people get scared straight away oh other territory i can't go because the uk founder will say oh india is huge how will how will i do business there in india i don't know what is it is too too hot too vast on the other side if i have to talk about uh, the indian founders oh uk oh great oh, but yeah it's going to be too costly there in india you know how will i leave the family and go so these are the kind of cultural differences and mindset changes that one need to kind of navigate but for those entrepreneurs who are willing to get seasoned who are willing to adapt and cross the boundaries they will evolve which we have seen very nice so no, yeah, think, go ahead i think that's where uh, the slight nuances of investment style and investment thesis comes in now like what prem said is his investment style on the contrary if the same company has to come to us and the uh, the founder is not thinking about uh, scaling at a global level that of course we want the founders to start with the india uh, we want them to so uh, solve grounded problems in india and uh, perfect the product before they start expanding and talk internationally but if a founder is talking to us and has not built a vision on how in the longer Uh, or a larger scheme of things this can be translated into a global company and what are the global problems uh, that, that are being can be solved with a similar technology and how uh, some of the global companies are doing it uh, that's kind of a red flag for us because i or us as a company expect the founders to have done a global research having a global point of view with a clear view of baby steps on let's take baby steps in india or even just tamil nadu or even just chennai or within chennai maybe just adya that's also fine you might be taking baby steps right now but you must have built a vision that what is the grand scheme of, or a bigger fabric look, looks like so that's where the probably the nuancing and i'm sure rohit will have a different point of view and ryan will have a different point of view uh, and that's where the nuancing on how uh, 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 people different work with different startups and what what is our experiences might have taught us differently and uh, his experiences might have taught him differently which is one of the very good things we have found out in tamil nadu startups where everybody who has started something is in it for the long term be it in chennai be it in madurai be it in coimbatore any of the other cities there is a passion for us to start something with a longer term vision one of our partner in the fund uh, used to mentor ether and uh, he used to tell us that look at clean tech and it's going to change this way and that's where the seed came from uh, 2013 2014 or so and uh, today uh, we have funded two uh, ex ether entrepreneurs who have come out of ether found a gap and built 